Hey guys, it's Leanna and I'm here today to talk about Dark Dawn. If you watch my channel, then you know that I am a fan of Jay Kristoff and I'm a fan of the Nevernight Chronicle, or I was. I did not care for Dark Dawn, um, and this just is a continuation of a trend this year. I did not like Aurora Rising and I was extremely disappointed, and I now I didn't like Dark Dawn. Um, and my pet theory about this is that Jay Kristoff is stretched too thin, that he's writing too many things all at once and he can't give any of them his full attention because again I have read his books before and loved them and the only thing that I can perceive or conceive of that has changed is how many different projects he's working on simultaneously and I think it's to the detriment of all of those projects. Now you're here to hear about Dark Dawn. I didn't like Dark Dawn. I feel I have very mixed feelings about it um, and I didn't rate it as low as I might have done if it wasn't part of the Nevernight Chronicle because the third book it's still kind of living off the fumes of the greatness that was Nevernight and God's Grave. So remnants of that greatness sort of carry this book but pretty much everything about it that is new, everything about it that is its own thing in my opinion was terrible and terribly executed. There was so many things about it that I disliked from the choices made with the plot, the choices made with the characters, the choices made with how to tell it, that there was very, very little that I liked about the book, which is a huge letdown um, because it's the conclusion of the series. So it just leaves everything with a bad taste in my mouth. If the middle book in a series is not great, I also usually still consider reading the last book. And if the last book sort of redeems it, then then it's okay. Then I'll still rate the series highly because, you know, it, it took a dive in the middle, but it, it, it fixed itself. But when the last book in the series is the dive, there's nothing to save it anymore. That's it. It's done. It's over and it's bad. My last impression of this series is that it's bad and it paints the other, the previous books in a bad light to me because my last memory is of the last book. It's bad. So why is it bad? <laughs> um, I'm going to try to talk briefly, just generally, and then dive into spoilers. So if you haven't read it yet, then you can at least see the beginning bit. So it's already kind of spoilery because I'm going to assume that you've read Nevernight and God's Grave. I can't be that non-spoiler. It's a third book in a series. <laughs> Dark Dawn picks up exactly where God's Grave left off, which is fine, which is great because the way God's Grave ends makes leaves you gasping for more, which is why also it's as a incomplete series. If I just had never night in God's grave and pretended Dark Dawn doesn't exist, that's impossible because dark, the way God's grave ends, you need resolution. So you need Dark Dawn and it's bad. <laughs> While I would say that Nevernight is very much focusing on the school setting, the Red Church, and that's kind of the vibe and the tone and the type of story that it is. And then God's Grave is very much a gladiator story. And that's the kind of book that it is. This third book, I don't know what it is. It doesn't have a cohesive theme or structure or central driving thing around which everything kind of centers. It's just kind of wrapping up loose ends, constant jokes, randomly inserting new characters, drama, angst, some, you know, R-rated content just because, and then it ends. And it ends in a way that I was not expecting and did not care for. So while everything in the first two books seemed to, the little stuff and the big stuff, the jokes and the serious moments, the violence, the sex, all of it was always very tightly driving towards a very determined conclusion or very, it, it was all tied together in a way that seemed very important. So again, if she was killing somebody, there was a reason for it. There was build up for it. The stakes were high and you felt real danger. If she was fucking someone, it was again, it was driving the plot forward. It was something very significant for her character development, something very significant for the plot. It was always purposeful. There was a reason this was happening. There was a reason we were being told about it. And in this third book, we had all of the same elements that the first two books had. We had the violence, we had the jokes, we had the sex, but none of it seemed to be for a purpose. It was just to sort of go through the motions so that we can get to the end. And, and I got to the end and I was exhausted because it all just was all over the place all the time and I felt nothing the entire time and it made no sense. So in the first two books, again, there were character deaths that even from more minor characters that left me gasping, that left me wondering, that left me shook. There were more character deaths, I think, in the third book, just like body count wise. And half the time I was like, who is this again? And the other half of the time I was like, oh, yes, that's sad. Whatever, who cares? The first two books, there were such a, a wonderfully crafted mystery element to everything. There were questions that we were asking 
There were clues, there were hints, there was conspiracy. So everything was always giving you slightly more information as you're slowly piecing together this puzzle. In Dark Dawn, your questions are largely answered. You already, and pretty early on, they're answered. So really, the purpose of Dark Dawn is to just sort of play things out and see who lives and who dies. And I frankly didn't care who would live and who would die. I had my answers. The answers weren't good. They were not answers that I found satisfying after all of the interesting questions. And then when it boiled down, I was like, what am I reading this for? Like halfway through the book, I was sitting there asking myself, what is it that I'm wondering? What is it that I need to still find out? All right, who lives and who dies? That's pretty much it. That's all that's left to this book is figuring out who lives and who dies. That's not enough of a reason, especially when the choices made with the characters made me dislike the characters. So I frankly didn't care if they would live or die. The first two books felt like they were taking themselves very seriously. And I don't mean that in a bad way. I mean, there was there was constantly humor thrown in and there was snark and, and whatever. But ultimately, the sense was that the author was taking this world and these characters seriously. And I, as the reader, did too, especially in God's Grave. God's Grave remains my favorite. The stakes seemed so high and realistic in the sense of I really felt the limits of what Mia could do and could not do. And her power was incredible, but also not limitless. And the people around her who were her enemies, I felt the hatred that she felt and the the misery that she was in, the suffering that she was going through, the things she was willing to do to get to her goal. It was very well done and I felt all of it. And again, the character deaths struck home. And when she achieved something, it really felt earned. And when people praised her, I was like, hell yeah. In this third book, people are just running around from scene to scene, doing stuff, killing people, fucking each other. And I didn't feel anything. I didn't feel like the stakes were real. I didn't have any questions left. I didn't feel like the author was taking it seriously. The jokes in it were such absurd, self-referential, self-indulgent, meta, breaking the fourth wall type of jokes that even in small quantities would have probably annoyed me. There was just so much of that that I was... It, it really seemed like the twist in Dark Dawn is that this has all just been a giant joke this whole time. And then the more fool you for taking this seriously. And I, <laughs> I did not like it. So I think that's really all I can say without being spoilery. So if you have not read Dark Dawn and you care about spoilers, then I recommend you leave. So in God's Grave, I never really... I was never really super shipping Ashlyn and Mia, but I could understand why Mia would need the comfort of Ashlyn. The kind of situation she was in, because again, the stakes felt genuinely high. The fact that she would need that kind of release, that she would need to let go in some way, and that Ashlyn is the one that's there. Yeah, I can buy that. War and dire situations like this, you know, make strange bedfellows. That's literally a saying, and they were literally bedfellows. So I could buy that, that they would be sort of wartime fuck buddies. I can, I get it. Even though Ashlyn killed Trick, and that seems very out of character for Mia to to put aside something that, because she's clearly the type to hold a grudge to an obscene degree. Agree. So it seems slightly unbelievable that she would ever, ever let go of the grudge against somebody who would kill Trick, but fine. In this dire situation, the fact that you just need that release, okay, I'll buy it. So it didn't bother me in God's Grave because that's how it came across to me. In Dark Dawn, Mia and Ashlyn being painted as this sort of true love, I don't buy that at all. For one, I don't understand at all why Mia would feel that way about Ashlyn, even if Ashlyn hadn't killed Trick. Like, a, the, Ashlyn doesn't really have any character development or growth throughout the series. She just kind of is. So there's no there's no reason that I can identify for Mia to really love Ashlyn. And then because there's no reason, then the fact that she killed Trick is that much worse. If she was that incredible to where I could totally see why Mia would feel conflicted, I would still think it was out of character for her to set aside her hatred of somebody who would kill Trick. But if Ashlyn was that amazing, I'd understand that. That, that conflicting situation that Mia is in. There's really nothing between them except a physical relationship. And anytime a love story is built on entirely a physical relationship, I don't buy it. There has to be more. That's just lust. That's not love. That's lust. Whereas, by contrast, the person who was demonstrating what I view as actual love was Trick. Trick was the one who, yes, he, I, he's obviously physically attracted to Mia, but he was the one willing to set aside his own feelings because he cares about Mia. He's the one willing to make sacrifices for Mia. He's the one willing to forgive the person who killed him because Mia loves them. Those are all incredible examples of actual love, not just lust. And all Ashlyn did was be snarky and rude and cruel and lustful. And 
then this book is constantly driving home how Mia needs Ashlyn to feel hope at the end. How she, how Ashlyn represents how all of this can end happily. That she doesn't have to be a monster, that she doesn't have to be a wicked thing at the end of all of this. And how, how on earth does Ashlyn represent any of that? If anyone represents that kind of redemption and positivity, it's Trick. So if that's what this is going to be, then it has to be Trick. If you're going to tell me that Mia wants to own the fact that she's a selfish cunt, then fine, she can be with Ashlyn and that can be true love and they deserve each other. But if you're going to tell me that Mia thinks Ashlyn represents what is all goodness and kindness and wonderful happiness at the end of the day, no, fuck off. Trick represents those things. So if you love that as an idea, then you then you love Trick. Trick got done dirty. <laughs> and I honestly, because of the way that I felt about Mia, the more Trick said that he would do anything for Mia, I just wanted to shake the boy. <laughs> I wanted to be like, Trick, you are great. You are wonderful. I don't know why on earth you would come back from the dead for Mia, because you deserve better. She does not deserve this level of devotion from you, from anyone, but not from you, Trick. Love is blind, but yikes, yikes, yikes. Trick deserves so much better. I want a book about Trick and not this book. <laughs> and then again, throughout the story, Mia's, her revenge quest was really watered down. And I didn't really feel the urgency of that anymore. And even Mia really didn't because she kept saying, well, how am I different from him? Uh, the only thing that I did find interesting and entertaining and worth it was her relationship with her brother. I thought that was interesting. And I thought it was fairly believably developed, the kind of conflicting emotions that Jonan would feel about his whole world being shattered. However, it was too fast. For Jonan to kind of begin to, I know he's a child, but for him to begin to accept Mia, I feel like this needed to have taken a lot longer. And I, I would believe it, it just, when it, at later in the book, I kind of thought it, because this book was dragging for me, I thought it had taken longer. And when Jonan was like, well, I've only, he's feeling conflicted, but thinking to himself that he's actually only known Mia for eight weeks. And when he said eight weeks, I... <laughs> thought back and couldn't believe it. It was only eight weeks. This seemed like it should take a lot longer for people to have felt this way, achieved everything they did. It seemed like they were traveling for forever. But apparently all of that, since her fight in the end of God's grave, had only been eight weeks, which is ridiculous to me. And then there was just so many characters thrown in from back from her red church days and from and all, the, all the characters from God's grave that I hadn't it's been a while since I read God's Grave. I didn't remember who half of them were. And there wasn't a lot given us to us to remind us who they were. So when they were dying all the time, and you could always tell when they were about to die, because there was always a scene where we suddenly highlighted that character. And I would sit there thinking, I kind of maybe remember who they are now. At least I kind of at least give more of a shit about them. And they're dead. Okay, that's why we were being made to feel something. So it didn't work. <laughs> it was very obviously trying to manipulate my emotions, but it didn't work. And then the scenes where Mia was fucking Ashlyn, in God's grave, this was significant because it was driving the plot forward. It was developing the fact that Mia is letting go of her hatred and needing this kind of release and putting her trust in someone and like developing this. So, and seeing the map on Ashlyn, like that's important to the plot. Like even in God's grave, the amount of it was probably unnecessary, but it was still significant to the plot. Here, we were just pausing every so often so we could have a scene with them fucking each other. Why? Because fan service? It certainly didn't drive the plot forward. Whereas the one instance where she does kiss Trick, that is significant to the plot. So that should be in there. And having a few instances to remind us that Ashlyn and Mia are banging each other, okay, fine, to remind us that this is going on, but we didn't need to see all of it. It was literally just there for fan service. And then the absolute most like aggravating thing of all in this book was this whole plot about how the Nevernight Chronicle books are in the library in the Red Church. That as a concept is already pushing the limits of what I'm willing to read and accept and think is fine. And then not only were those books in the library, he was describing the UK covers and the sprayed edges. Are you fucking joking? Are you fucking joking? Am I supposed to take these books seriously? Because I really feel like you're just laughing in my face now. The first two books were great and I invested in them. And when you're going to write like this, this seems like the SNL version of Nevernight. I, are you kidding me? They're going to the Library of the Red Church to find the exact books that you would order from fucking Waterstones or Goldsboro? That pulled me out of the story and pissed me off. The fact that someone's own story would be written in their time before it's happened as like a timey-wimey magic concept. It's not my favorite idea, but... You could do some interesting things with that for sure. But you're describing actual books that are on my shelf right now? Like, fuck off. And then in addition to that, 
the constant self-referential jokes weaving into the story, the kind of criticisms that Jay himself gets. So people saying, who would read a book with footnotes in it? And you really do like your prose, don't you? And it's a bit wordy and all these kind of criticisms that people level at Jay Kristoff, put them in the story like that. There was an instance of this in Illuminae, which I thought was interesting and funny. And the story itself was kind of more lighthearted. And there was just the one instance where some character said something about how they should write a book about what's happened to them, but no one buys sci-fi because someone I think told Jay and Amy that they'd never sell Illuminae because sci-fi doesn't sell. So like, fine. That's cute. And it's a modern setting and it's kind of more of a quirky, funny book anyway. So it's fine. For Nevernight to do this to this degree? No. I already didn't like where this was going. I already didn't like where the characters were choosing. I already thought the plot was everywhere and nowhere at once. And then to do this? No. I'm done. And then to promise throughout the books that Mia is going to die at the end, and even especially in Dark Dawn, with everyone now reading Nevernight in the plot, constantly talking about Mia's gonna die. Mia's gonna die. And then she didn't even fucking die. Trick died. Again. Nope, 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 nope. After Trick died again, I was like, okay, I guess everyone's gonna die. And then Ashlyn died, I was like, yep. And when Ashlyn died, I didn't give a shit, but fine. Ashlyn's dead, Trick's dead, then Mia will die too, because we have already been promised that she's dead and it's less sad now because, I mean, everyone she cared about is dead, so may as well. But nope, she comes back from the dead to be with back from the dead version of Ashlyn, because it's true love. Meanwhile, Trick just gets to die again. Because, I, because why? I don't know. Why didn't Mia die at the end? That would have at least been a satisfying conclusion. Just, I don't even know what these books are anymore. Everything that I thought they were, where they were going, Dark Dawn just shat all over it. So I think I gave the book three stars because I I still love the series, the at least the first two books. And I, I love the promise of what it could have been. And Jay Kristoff is still witty. He does still have moments of brilliance. He does still have some amusing jokes. His footnotes still have some interesting world building. Some of his ideas are still clever. So I can't bear to give it the kind of rating that I would give a truly awful book that has no plot and no world building and nothing going for it. So, I mean, the rating system of five stars is so painfully inadequate and, and flawed. So I, I gave it three, but... It's more just because I respect the work and craft that went into the series. This book really just pissed me off. And especially because I genuinely feel like Jay Kristoff could do better and that he would have done better if he wasn't working on so many other things and wasn't just trying to sell books. I just, there's a, such a stark contrast between the style of the writing and the quality of the writing between God's Grave and Dark Dawn that when I ranted and raved in my Aurora Rising review saying I could not believe that Jay Kristoff and Amy Kaufman had written that book, I feel that way about Dark Dawn. I can't believe this is the same writer. I mean, obviously it is because he has a very distinct style and that is still present, but this book was just a giant joke. Everything was just a giant fucking joke. And um, yeah. I feel a bit abused by it. <laughs> so let me know in the comments down below how you felt about Dark Dawn if you read it. If you're at this point in the video, I really hope you've read Dark Dawn <laughs> or you really don't plan to so you don't care. <laughs> yeah, I felt let down. I, I think other people did like it. So I'm very happy for you if you liked it because I wish I liked it. I would be a much happier person if I did. I will continue to read his writing. Hopefully it will get better. I'd like to think that maybe his brain is more occupied with his new project. Uh, Empire of the Vampire is up next. So perhaps he was just over it when it came to Nevernight and was ready to move on. In which case, like, still fuck you for like doing us dirty like that because we still care about your books and you made us care. But I'll still read his next book. And if it's, <laughs> if it's still bad, well then my love of Jay Kristoff may need to be revisited. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. I post videos on Saturdays. So like and subscribe. I'll see you next Saturday.